First of all, what color I'm using? I'm using Frosé from our Tick Fox. I've been looking for this forever. Found it at Sally's when I was getting groceries like last Thursday, right before everything kind of exploded. But anyway, when I do pastels, A, I make sure my hair is as even as possible to start with, so my hair is pretty even. And then I leave it on for a long, long, long time, usually three to four hours if I can, two at a minimum. So how I do this is I have a bowl, I have the dye. This is a pastel, so I'm not going to be thinning it down. Um, normally I will split the colors with a conditioner to get them to a more pastel shade. I'm not doing like multiple colors, I'm just doing one. And since this is a pastel and I'm not going anywhere for quite a while, I am not going to wear gloves because I will use a brush at my roots and then I just use my hands to work the rest of the way through my hair. Um, speaking of my hair, I know the ends look dead. It's not that they're dead. I do have some split ends. Part of the problem is I lost a ton of hair, especially around my hairline. So if you actually look all this, that's super short, is actually growth. Like all this, my standard length, all this is hair that has been growing in over the past several years that is finally catching up with the rest of my hair. So that's why my hair looks kind of like it's layered. It's not actually layered. That's all new growth. I can tell by looking at the ends. Cut ends are flat. Split ends are quite obviously um, split. And the new growth ends are tapered. Like they look like the end of a cat's whisker. They're very tapered. That's how you can tell the difference. And this, all this little shorty stuff is all new, new, I say new growth, but I've been growing it out for like four years now. But I don't want to like cut the rest of my hair to match it because I don't want my hair super short. So I'm kind of dealing with this weird, it looks like I layered my hair, but I didn't situation. Anyway, I'm basically going to take frisé, take the safety thing off, and pour a ton of this into the container. Now the nice thing about only using one color and not needing to mix colors or to thin it out with conditioner means you don't have to worry about putting in enough and having the color mix right. You can just dump some in there and then if you run out, add more. So this is what the color looks like. I freaking love it. When I heard that they were coming out with this color, I flipped. I was so happy. I love bright pink, but it's very, very hard to get a bright bubblegummy pink color from their other pink shade, Virgin Pink. It's very hard to get bubblegum from that because it's, it's very hot pink with just a touch of purple. It isn't like a pink pink, whereas this is like a pink pink. So I need to split my hair again. I haven't washed any of the stuff that I used while I was bleaching my hair yet. So I'm just going to split my hair kinda down the back. I try and divide my hair the same way when I'm adding the color that I do when I'm bleaching. But at the same time, actually I'm gonna start on this side first, it's easier. But at the same time, Unless you're doing like different colors, you really don't need to, as long as you just make sure to like hit everything. So, just going to take this. This is probably the least helpful hair dyeing video like in history. <laughs> oh, ouch. Okay, that clip hurts. <laughs> this is not one of my good clips. It's one of my crappy clips that doesn't have teeth on it. Okay, so this is a very complicated, difficult process. You literally just slap it on there. 
I'm serious. It's so easy, you guys. Um, if you're afraid of bleaching your hair yourself, go to a professional when they open back up and have them bleach your hair to the level you want it to be at if you're afraid of bleaching and then just do this part yourself because seriously, it's so easy to dye your hair with this dye. It's really thick, it's like pudding. She recommends doing thin, thin, thin layers and really saturating it, which I completely agree with. So I will usually go in layer by layer and I will do really thin, like quarter inch layers. Okay, like that. And then I will just go in and add it there and here. The way of doing this, if you're doing multiple colors, is totally different and gets much, much, much more complicated. But I will just stick my hands into the dye. Again, if you are not using a super light pastel or your skin tends to pick up colors really easily, wear gloves. I just could not care less right now. And to be honest, playing with like squishy stuff like this is kind of fun and therapeutic right now. So there we go. I pretty much saturate that whole chunk. And since I'm not doing multiple colors, I'll just throw it wherever. It doesn't matter. This stuff goes on really, really easily. You can even split your hair with your hands if you want to because the brush will get a little gunky after a while. I just go through like this. I will usually, when I'm not filming a video, obviously like I am today, I will usually just put on a show and do this. This stuff is so moisturizing for your hair. All it does is deposit color. So you can leave this on like literally hours. I know some people will leave it on overnight. I wouldn't recommend that. How are y'all gonna sleep? Like I've slept with curlers in my hair before when I was a kid and then I've slept with like handkerchiefs on my hair before. You would have to wear a shower cap to keep this from getting on your pillow and that's assuming you don't like move it very much in your sleep because I would probably totally kill a shower cap. Like it would be off my head in two seconds. So I wouldn't recommend that unless you're one of those people who can like go to bed and not move all night and or you don't mind your, you know, whole bed turning bright pink. But I will literally put this on my head and leave it for hours, no problem. I've even gone to do errands before, like if I had to run and do something. I've gone and done stuff with this stuff in my hair before. If you need to, you can put on a shower cap and then either put a bandana or a hat on over it if you need to run out, which obviously current climate not counting. Um, but in normal times, if you need to run out, you can do that too. Oh my God, I love this so much. Now my only concern is since this is more of a true pink, is how this is going to look against my skin tone because the other pink is slightly more warm toned and brighter, whereas this is more of a cooler toned, pure, straight, like pure pink, straight pink, pure pink, um, true pink. There, you guys know me in English. We don't always get along. And this is just what I do. I just go just like I did with the bleaching. By the way, I do the back of my head the same as the front, except when I divide it, I don't go straight in layers. I go at an angle, just because it's easier with the shape of my head. But yeah, I'm just grabbing sections and really working it in. I like using my hands with that gloves when I can, just so I can really feel that the product is getting on like every single hair. Now we're just down to some little like bits in the front. Depending on how your hair is bleached, this may not take completely evenly on your hair, depending on the amount of damage, the porosity of your hair, which basically means, porosity means how porous your hair is, like a sponge, like how much it will soak up. Right, here's that whole section of hair dyed. Once I have a whole section done, 
I will literally just kind of take my hands, work the dye through it, and if I'm doing a darker dye, I will usually pin it up until I'm ready to work on the next section. Be careful if you're doing that, because if you push too much dye off of your hair while pinning it up, you can end up with streaks and stuff. But I will literally just make sure every little bit is done. Also, this shows how thick my hair is, like near the base, compared to at the ends. So again, that is from hair growth abnormalities, but you can also see how it's taking darker and lighter on some parts. So I'm just gonna talk while I do the back portion. Um, I may disappear out of frame just to be able to see what I'm doing better. I hope there is enough dye because I'm using quite a lot of this, not having watered it down. So let's hope I don't run out because, uh, then I'm going to have to wait like a week to get an order from Sally's. This could be really fun. I'm actually not hating though the yellow on one side, the pink on the other. So I'm just going to coat the back of my head. You can kind of see what I'm doing, I think. I have to use this bigger mirror so I can see the back of my head in the little mirror. I would highly recommend if you don't have help, have it two mirrors available either a handheld or one like behind you, like this one. It's so helpful. Can you guys see me? You can kind of see me. So the way I part the back for doing the layers is instead of going like straight like this, I kind of take it at the crown and like cross sections like this. So I go like across like this, if that makes sense. So that's how I do the back, just because it's easier to see. Again, I just do the roots of a section, grab some dye in my hand, and then go through the length. And I also detangle with my fingers as I go through the length, because as you're parting it, it'll get tangly. So, and then just, Throw it in with someone else. So I've started a new exercise program. I am doing the, I think it's called the Slim Thighs or something. It's Chloe Ting's workout. Um, one of her many workouts, by the way, her YouTube channel is a great resource for at-home body weight workouts. Like, seriously, uh, most at-home workouts are like, here, you need like 600 things with her. It's like, you need a yoga mat, and that's it. I think it's called like the 25 Day Slim Thigh Challenge, but it's really heavy on the abs. I did day two today and I could not get through it because it is so ab heavy that my poor little baby abs were crying. But I'm actually trying to do like all 25 days. I am not filming a video for this. I wanted to, but then I really, really suck at doing like filming little clips here and there for like days in a row because I will inevitably forget or I will look really like crap one day, not that I look fabulous today. By the way, that's my closet. I forgot to close the door. Anyway, I will forget to film one day or I'll look like crap and not want to film. So I didn't want to put that pressure on myself. I'm trying not to... I'm trying not to put a whole lot of pressure on myself and I'm just kind of filming what I want to when I want to versus trying to do these big, complicated, multi-day videos. Just because when I try multi-day videos, it just ends up being a disaster. Okay, I am putting more dye in the bowl because I definitely need more. I bought the big one, the eight fluid ounce one. I would recommend if your hair is any longer than mine and you're not like thinning it out with conditioner to get two of these. It's like, literally like spreading pudding on your hair, which is actually one of the reasons I love it because it's really, really easy to work with. 
See, I have no idea what color this is actually going to turn out to be because some parts of my hair are platinum and other parts are more yellow. I'm not sure how this is going to take on my hair yet because I haven't used this particular color before because it is like brand new. I mean, technically it's been out for like six months, but my Sally's finally got it. I know on like white, white hair, it's supposed to look bubblegum pink. And then on more yellow hair, it comes out of rose gold. So I could have a mix of like rose gold and bubblegum pink in my hair. I have no idea. That's part of the fun with dyeing your hair. For me, not knowing what the exact outcome is gonna be is actually kind of fun. I learned a long time ago to give up any sort of thoughts of control on what my hair is actually going to look like because I learned a long time ago that my hair has a mind of its own. It will do what it wants to and I'm just kind of along for the ride. Okay, I'm just going to take down that whole back section and do the same thing I did in the front, massaging it in, making sure I have all those roots well covered, that I have it like down my neck in the back, behind my ears, and all my hair is thoroughly covered. And it looks like I'm not like pulling the dye out of my hair. You do not want to do that. I'm just wringing my hands through my hair and making sure that like everything is thoroughly coated. All right, so I'm going to take this other piece of hair right here and just squish it back. And we're going to kind of roll that into its own little bun which will hopefully stay by itself. Like, squish, there it is. Okay, so the whole side of my head is nice and pink now. And we're going to do the other side. I'm gonna let you guys go, get the pink dye on my head, and I will talk to you guys once my whole head is covered. I just wanted to pop in really quick. My hair is all pink. I have it thoroughly, thoroughly saturated. All in the back, I just have it in a little bun clipped up to keep from getting on anything. Some parts look lighter, like right there, but I promise you they are fully, fully saturated. Um, I used probably like all of this bottle. There might be like that much left based on weight. I used a lot of it because I know from experience using Arctic Fox, more is better. You really want every single hair strand like covered and that does take a lot of product, unfortunately. But anyway, um, it is, what time is it? It's 3.30 right now. So I am going to literally let this sit for, not for the, till about 5.30, 6.30. So probably at least two, three hours. So I am going to return a phone call and then go do a couple other things because I can pretty much do anything if you have your hair up in a clip. It's so saturated, it literally won't move. You can also put a cap on if you want to, but like I've never, this doesn't dry out or anything, so it's no big deal just leaving it like this. And then I will rinse it out, dry it, and show you guys the final result. Hey you guys, it is six o'clock now. It's been my hair for at least a couple hours now now. My hair looks very, very cotton candy pink. I feel very Frenchy from Greece right now with like that level of bubblegum pink. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse this out. Unfortunately, it's getting really cloudy out because it's supposed to rain. So I'm not going to be able to show you what this looks like in full sunlight, probably for a day or two, unless we're lucky and get some sun tomorrow morning. But I'm going to rinse this out, blow dry it, and then I will show it to you guys. So here is my final color. This is with my hair um, blow dried. Of course, it's super frizzy because that's just how my hair is because of all the new growth. It just kind of, my hair poofs a lot. It's naturally wavy, but it's not the kind of wavy that's cute. It's the kind of wavy where it's like you get a wave here, then you might have a wave here, and then wave over here, and they're not even that big. It's kind of that wavy where it looks like you never brush your hair. 
and occasionally it can get to air dry right, but most of the time it Okay, sorry, that cut off. Apparently my card is full because I've been filming too much, so I will need to um, clear that out. But anyway, I will show you guys tomorrow morning, well, afternoon, what my hair looks like. But here's what the back looks like. You'll also be able to see the color better tomorrow because, of course, it's dark now. There's no natural light. There's all artificial light. I can tell that there are some areas, the usual suspects, where it did not take as pink. It took more of, like, a peachy tone, which is fine because I love peach. And then I noticed, like, it took really pink around, like, all the newer growth, fresher bleached spots, like, here and here. And then like here and then on the top it took more peach I don't know why it does that um, also the top layer of my hair is the first to fade I think that's because it's the most damaged from straightening and things like that but this is where it's at and I will show you guys the final finished styled in daylight color tomorrow. So I am going to get out of this horrible lighting and I will see you guys tomorrow. Hey you guys, here is the final look. I love it so much. Oh my gosh. I feel like a Frenchie in Greece, like full beauty school dropout, crazy bubblegum pink hair. I love it so much. Let me show you the back. Woo. I love it. Um, this isn't like how it looks in daylight and I totally missed curling like one piece of hair. Yeah. Go back there. Anyway, it is daytime, but it's very, very overcast, so I don't have sunshine and everything. But as soon as I have a day with sunshine, I will go outside my house, like in my yard, or I'll stay in front of the window or something and take a better photo of my hair for you guys. But I love it. Now this is just straight frosé on my head. Um, let sit for about two hours like I mentioned in the rest of the video and I love it so much as you can see some of the areas where my hair is more yellow turned out more rose gold peachy and then near my temples where my hair tends to bleach really light it's more of a brighter pink so I have kind of a mix of like medium bubblegum brighter pink and peach and I absolutely love it. I think it's amazing. Honestly, I think I may have found this hair. Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. I'm going to do something just so you guys know if you're ever taking photos or something. Obviously, this doesn't work if you're out. If you're taking photos and you have like one piece that is just not functioning, you can just grab a hairpin and like... Pin that sucker in the back of your head, and then no one sees it, and it doesn't exist. So that's what we're going to do for today, because I am filming a couple videos today. That's why I'm, like, in full makeup, and I have, like, a sports bra on, because I was actually working out today. Funny enough, being stuck in your house, you run out of things to do, and there's only so much Netflix I can watch without going crazy and feeling like I have to do something, so I'm working out a lot more. But I love this. I think it's beautiful. It looks so pretty when it's straight and smooth. But I just wanted to curl it today so that you could really see how the light reflects off of it. It's very shiny, very pretty. I am thrilled with it. I love it so much. I feel like myself again, and I don't feel like I'm like blending into my background all beige and white. Like it doesn't feel like my skin tone matches my hair anymore, which is amazing. So hopefully, hopefully when I get this video on the camera, it looks better than my previous ones. But I feel like myself again. I love it so much. I'm so happy. So hopefully you guys found this video somewhat helpful and entertaining. If you have any questions, ask down in the comments below. And again, remember, I'm not a professional hairdresser. I just do what I know how to do and what I've learned offline. And this is what I end up with. So I'm really, really pleased with how my hair turns out. It feels nice and healthy. And I just love it. 
Anyway, thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post several times a week and you can also keep up with me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm pretty much everywhere. All the links for those are down below and I hope this is kind of a nice break from all the craziness that is going on right now. I will see you guys again very, very soon. Bye.